హలో ఫ్రెండ్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు గెస్ ద రెమెడీ క్వశ్చన్ వీ ఆర్ లుకింగ్ ఫార్వర్డ్ టు డాక్టర్ సప్తర్షి బ్యానర్జీ సెమినార్ ఇన్ పూణే ఇట్ ఈస్ ఆన్ రుమాటోలజీ ఆన్ జాయింట్ కంప్లైంట్స్ ఆన్ దాట్ బ్యాక్గ్రౌండ్ లెట్ అస్ సీ అ కేస్ విచ్ ఈస్ దాట్ ఆఫ్ జాయింట్ కంప్లైంట్స్ దిస్ ఇస్ అ కేస్ ఆఫ్ సీరో నెగటివ్ పాలీ ఆర్థరైటిస్ సో సీరో నెగటివ్ uh rheumatoid arthritis and uh, he is a mechanic a scooter mechanic or a bike mechanic and he works in the same building as that of prana where i work so uh, when he came to me he was suffering from joint complaints mostly all small joints and then uh, i asked him about the sensation so he says uh, it is a usual pain like sensation not very different so i try and ask him more and more and he says it is as if you know you get hit with water somebody throws water at you at a very high speed and when you get hit with water that is the exact sensation i get and then i ask him about the modalities he says if i get a draft of cold air on the joints or if i am in an, uh, if i am driving uh, riding a bike then uh, the pains are more so i said okay then what do you do at that time he says no no i just keep on wearing gloves it it helps a lot what else aggravates him and he says when i work that is the time when i use my hands that is the time it is aggravated so i said okay uh, tell me more about the complaints and he says doctors you have to cure this because i am very much afraid that if i am not able to use my hands because i am a mechanic then then who will look after me who will take care of me so i said tell me about this fear who will look after me and he says uh, see i have ha- gone through a phase in life where i was totally dependent i was bedridden and there was nobody to take care of me i ha- i live with my brother and my sister in law his wife but uh, it was a very difficult time for me because they they had to do their own things how could they be at my service for 24 by 7 and in fact i'll tell you he says that uh, that was the time like i i w- came back from the hospital and there was nobody to take me upstairs to the first floor where i was supposed to rest because my brother had gone for his job the rickshaw wala was not ready to help my sister in law couldn't do anything so i had to go and on top of that it was a very narrow staircase so even people could not support me and i could walk up it was not that kind of a situation so i had to take the lead and i had to uh, bring all my will to work and i had to climb that stairs when i had actually a rod put in my leg so i said describe this feeling when when you had to do all this he said oh no i had to that there was no way out i put together all my will and i climbed the stairs so i said okay how was the feeling or sensation he is not able to describe that so i said okay but how did you get this rod into your uh, your leg he says oh that's a story the when when the building was being built i uh, came to see where my next workplace would be and it was past 7 o'clock it was already almost dark uh in the evening so we came uh, me and my friend came and we were seeing it was the first floor but it was at a double height so it was almost 17 20 feet from ground level and then we were looking around looking around and walking our way through it was still not cleared up and then i walked and i didn't realize where the edge of the building was but by the time i reached the edge i felt that somebody pushed me and when that uh, feeling came it was almost like a ghost pushed me because my friend was quite far off from me and there was nobody else with that uh, feeling when i fell down there was a sound big sound 
and I could sense that something has broken inside me. So my friend also heard the sound and he asked me, where are you? Where are you? I said, oh, no, no, nothing. I have just fallen down. You come down by the staircase, call the watchman and take me. Uh, maybe I'll need to go to a hospital. You take me to the hospital in a rickshaw. Call for a rickshaw also. So then I said, how was this? Tell me about this. You fell down. You knew something had broken and you were telling him, tell, describe this whole situation to me, how you felt in it. So he says, no, no, I fell down. I knew something had broken. There was intense pain, but I knew that if I lose my sense of, you know, uh, presence, if I lose my hope, if I lose any control over the situation, then it's going to be a bit difficult because this friend is not a strong fellow, neither physically nor mentally. So I gave him exact instructions. You come down by the stairs. If you come this way, you will also fall. And I knew he's not physically strong. So I told him, you call the watchman, you call for a rickshaw, everything. And I just took it in my stride. And uh, as he did all of that, we sat in a rickshaw. There was intense pain. We reached a hospital. And then in the hospital, the doctor asks me, okay, but how did you manage all this? Because this kind of a fracture, it was a compound fracture. You would have intense pain and that kind of pain, people uh, fall unconscious. How did you manage all this? So he says, no, no, that I knew that I had no option. So I had to put all my will together and do whatever was necessary. So in, in two situations, he gives me this idea that he needs to put his will together and keep control over the situation and do whatever is necessary. <coughs> so I said, okay, tell me how, how this you told me that you know it it was almost uh, for a quite a while that you were dependent you were bedridden describe that phase of your life and he says uh, see when this rod was there in my life uh, in my leg then uh, i couldn't move and at the same time something had gone wrong uh, wrong in my lumbar region also so i couldn't stand up i couldn't walk couldn't do anything so I was totally bedridden. I was dependent on everybody. But so I said, okay, tell me what you felt in that. So he says, no, there was, there was no feeling. I was just waiting. Someday it will get better. Someday it will get better. But it didn't. And then I said, uh, one day it something clicked in, in me. And I said, no, I just have to do whatever is necessary. I have to use all my willpower and I have to walk. I can't go on like this in my life. I cannot remain dependent all my life. So slowly, I started getting strength in my legs. I started moving the leg on purpose. I started doing things. Then after two, three months, I tried to stand up. I, I did that for around three, four months, total six months down the line. I started walking on a walker. And I, it took a year, but then I started walking and today you see me, I'm doing everything that I was doing earlier. So I said, tell me more about this phase. He says, no, no, I was always into uh, massage and uh, all these things. I used to massage other people who were dependent. So I knew what kind of life it is and I knew what are the things that need to be done. So I would either do it a little bit myself or I would call somebody and tell them, okay, you exactly do this for me. Exactly this nerve, this muscle you have to massage. And then slowly but surely I got strength in my legs. Then I asked him, what is the other stress in his life? And he says, see, the other stress has been that uh, a time when I had to get my uh, sister married. And that time I felt uh, because I am a mechanic, people are not respecting me. And when they talk to me, I could feel the insult in their talk. And actually I became a mechanic because I felt everybody respected a mechanic. 
they wouldn't even call us by name they would say mystery mystery which is which for me was a a, a sense of respect whereas in the in the sisters marriage it was a totally opposite scene and i felt a lot of insult in that so i said tell me what you felt in the insult how did you feel the insult and he says see it is it is quite you know you feel hurt in the heart you feel hurt your ego gets shattered you uh, you need to keep control in that situation because otherwise your sister's life will be uh, ruined they will talk in a wrong way to her all her life just because you reacted so it's better to keep control and just forget the insult so all this was the uh, case and uh, i would urge you to try and solve the case to try and find the remedy see you guess the remedy